everybody, Patty Ann here. Today I'm going to show you how to make this in the hoop really cute, I think it's called a bunting. I'm going to make mine say joy, okay? This is one I was practicing on, and I don't really like the colors I've made for this one, although it's, it's pretty, it's more elegant. And here's another one that I hadn't quite finished, same kind of deal. But the one I've decided to go with is this one right here, because I'm going to make it for my grandkids. And on the back, <laughs> there's Santa Claus. So I think that turned out super cute. So I've already done the J, and I'm going to do the O and the Y. Okay, so these are the things that I'll need. I'll need some of this, which is Steam -a Seam 2 Light. I like to use this because I prefer cutting the things on my little portrait. You can do it on your Cricut just as easily, or you could do it on your Cameo, scan and cut, any machine. I use my portrait because it fits perfectly in here. I have my sewing machine right here on this table, my cutter, and my embroidery machine, and they're all kind of small, so they fit. All right, I might need Salky KK2000, a temporary adhesive. I'll also need some uh, wash away stabilizer. And I'll have lump, some of these linked down below that I use. I'll need two pieces of this that will fit in my 5x7 hoop, which is right here. I also need pieces like this that will be for the berries. The green, which doesn't have any kind of um, stabilizer on it yet, nor have I used the Tyrael Magic, and I'll show you that in a moment. Here are some red pieces that I'll need for the O and the Y. The white piece is for the front, and this is obviously for the back, the Santa fabric. And then I have some batting here. You can just use felt, something like that for inside. So let's get started first with me showing you how I go ahead and put the Tyrael Magic on these pieces. Okay, this is the Tyrael Magic that I'm going to use. And what this is going to do, it's going to make it so my fabric isn't really, really limp like this. And it's going to cut a whole lot better in any of my machines that I have with my regular blade. I don't get a rotary blade or anything. So I'm just going to spray this liberally, meaning quite a bit. Might need to hold this upright a little bit. And I'm going to let that soak in for a few minutes. I can just put these pieces, stack them up. I'm just trying to make sure that all of the little parts are wet with the Tyrael Magic. I'm just kind of trying to make sure that everything gets wet. And in the meantime, I have my iron heating up. You're supposed to let this line dry, but I never have that much patience. So I'm going to go ahead and just after these are setting for a moment, this one's not wet right there in the corner. Got to make sure that it's really, I like to make sure that it's really well done. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, and I could use a paper towel, I believe. Okay, my, hopefully my iron, my little iron here, is heated up enough. So I'll just come over here and just iron these. You know this is my favorite little iron to use because not only can I use it perfectly here on my little table, but as well as I can use it inside of many of the hoops that I have if I need to press something. And I know everybody always wants to know where do I get stuff, so I have it linked down below for you. All right, so let me show you the difference of this fabric. Remember what it was like before? was really limp, kind of like, well, let's see, I have a piece similar. Here we go. It was like this, and no matter how hard I try, 
I can't make it stay out straight like this. Okay. So that's what the Tiro Magic does. It almost turns this like into a paper. And that really works well when we go to cut it in our cutting machines. So I'll do the same process to all of these. Okay, and the then next I'll be thing back. I'm going to do is I've cut a piece of the Steam of Seam 2 light to fit each one of these pieces. So in order to put it on, I have a pressing cloth here, Teflon. I'm going to peel this apart. And it doesn't matter which side I keep. Well, it does. I want to keep the side with the sticky on. This is trash. This side is what I want to keep. What I'm going to do is iron this onto here. And I have this pressing cloth down here in case my steam seam hangs over the edge so it doesn't get uh, onto my um, ironing pad. So I've put this on the wrong side of the fabric. The paper side is still up. And I'm just going to heat this right onto here. And this is going to help it to stick onto my mat. It's that one. So this is the trash. Bring this one up. Turn it over to the wrong side. Take this piece. And again, you can kind of just squeeze your fingers together like that. And it helps it to come apart. This is trash. This is the good part. With the sticky side down on the wrong side of my fabric. Just press it into place. Okay. And I'll continue doing that with the other two pieces. Okay, now here we are in a program or a piece of computer software that I like to use called Embrilliance. I'll have it linked for you down below in case you would like to purchase it. It's a one-time fee. It's not something that you have to rent. This is Embrilliance Essentials. Also, I have open right now the file that I purchased. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just think it's really super cute. So I'll have that link down below for you too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for um, the letter O because I'm doing joy and I want the 5 by 7 hoop because that's the size I'm using. Notice it says PES file type because that's the kind of machine I have. Brother machines take PES files and that's what I downloaded. If you use a Janome machine you would download the embroidery files for your Janome. That kind of thing. So I'm just going to double click on this to open it and there's the O. Now it's really, really easy if you have this software to make the O cuttable so that you'll have a file that you can send to your machine. So if we look over here, we can expand this and this shows us all the different steps that will be included in this file. So I can also come up here to where the little stitch simulator button is and I can begin to drag this around. Now notice the first thing it's going to do, step number one, it's going to do the outline. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here in this uh, panel or this layers and I'm going to look for the O, which is st step number four. See it says 1-4? Right there it is. And it's highlighted. And now you can see it's right here. It's highlighted. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this purple box right down here. When I click on that, there's a new file that's going to open, or a new window, I should say. I'm going to click on the word applique. Right now it says not applique, but I'm going to change that so it says applique position. And I'd like you to look closely right here because you'll notice it says cutting inflate.
it's going to inflate or make larger this image by 1.5 millimeters and that's terrific because it's going to be a little bit larger so that we'll know that all of our stitching will hit that file perfectly. So right now after I do that I can say save right here and I'm going to save it as the O 5 by 7 Notice here I can save it as an SVG. If I want to open this in Cricut and use it I just save it as an SVG. For Silhouette, depending on which version I have, I can save it as an SVG if I have the Business Edition or if I don't have the Business Edition I can use this drop down menu right here and I can save it as a scan and cut file or I can save it for sure cut files, sure cuts a lot, or a Silhouette Studio file. So I'll save it I think I'll just save it as an SVG since I have the business edition and I'll show you how easy it is to open this with your Cricut software as well. So I'll save that as an SVG and say save. Just say OK for this and then close this out. Now I'm going to open up Silhouette. I've already opened up this file because I'm, I'm going to show you another way you could do it if you don't have the Imbrilliant software. But I'm going to go to File and open whoops and I'm gonna look for that letter O that I just saved there it is okay I'm gonna click on that and open and there it is right there now I could come over here and fix my setup if I want to, to custom I'll put it back to auto letter and this is what's gonna cut whoops however I need to group it and that's what's going to cut out perfectly with my machine. Now again, if I did not have Imbrilliance, which I highly recommend because it has so many things that you can do with it, but if I didn't have it, what I could do is open the same file here. I'd have to have the Business Edition if I want to save this for my Cricut, but if I just have the regular uh, free version, I can do it with my Silhouette. What I would do is start taking these things apart removing stitch files that I do not need because what I really want eventually is just the letter O the placement okay same with these berries I'm taking off things until I'm left just with the berries and just with the leaf and the O I don't need this but notice there's a box around this that I don't need so I'm gonna right click on this and say release the compound path and that's going to let me drag the whoa I better go ahead and group that though let's grab the leaf out first and get rid of this and now I'll take both of these and group now I have the three pieces that I need almost perfectly for um, cutting with my machine but there's something I still have to do remember and in Brilliance, it added that 1.5 millimeters, the extra around the edges, so that it is caught perfectly with the stitching. I need to do that here. And I can do them like this. Click on this, come over here to the offset panel, add an offset. I'll change the offset size to 0 0.035 and hit enter. Okay, now there's three different lines here and I only want one. So let's scroll in a little closer so you can see. So the very inmost one, this one right here actually, the single one, that's the original. I'm going to delete it. These two were my offsets. I only want the outer offset. So I'm going to go ahead and release the compound path. Right click and release the compound path. Then I'm going to remove this middle one and delete it and now I'm left with the cut file that I need. So let me show you this one and I'll save the original so we can compare. So here we have the berries. I'm going to come over here to offset. I'm going to offset them by 0 0.035 enter. Again I have three pieces. This single one was my original. We'll save that so we can compare. These were were from my offset 
I'm going to right click on it and say release the compound path. I'm going to delete the tinier one or the smaller one, save the larger one. Now if I bring this one up here, you can see how it's ever so slightly larger. Looks like it's quite a bit larger, but remember right here this little square is an inch, inch by inch. So the one that we need to save then, not this one, not the original, delete. And I can go ahead and do the letter O the well, same show way. You again, what we did in Embrilliance. Come back here one more time. So in Embrilliance, what we did was we found, well, let's do it for the leaf. We haven't done that yet. Here are the leaves, right? There's one file for the leaves, two, and three. We want the very first one. We'll click on this right here. We'll change it to applique. I'll change this to say applique position. There it's adding that 1.5 millimeters. I'll say save and it's going to save it. And I've already saved it and I really only need to save this once because it's the same exact size for every one of these buntings, or every one of these flags, every banner. But I'll just say save. And it says, I already have it. Do I want to replace it? You can see I have it. And I could say yes. Okay. So what I wanted you to, sh to show you then was, if I open Cricut Design Space now, let's go to New, Upload, Upload an Image, Browse, uh, Downloads, Creative Kiwi, I believe it's in here. Holly, okay. Now we're going to look for that O. Oh, there it is. Okay, and notice when I hover over it, it says it's an SVG file, which is perfect for Cricut. There it is. Upload. Insert. And right now, it comes in kind of weird like this. I'm going to grab both of these and just come over here way at the right hand side at the bottom and just say slice. And now that's sliced out what I'll need. So there's what I need. I can delete this piece. Delete that piece. And if you click on this and we look up here at its size, notice its width is 2.836 up here. If Remember that 2.836. If we come back over here into Silhouette, you'll see that the size of this one that I have selected, if you look right up here, it's 2.833, which is actually only three thousandths of an inch difference. So it's perfect, just like that. So that's how this will work in Cricut. Okay, I'm cutting two pieces of Wash Away Stabilizer. And then I'm going to hoop these by themselves. Place one. I'm going to put this one in the bottom. And the only reason why I'm doing that is it really is wash away stabilizer. You probably can't see, but this one got a couple little holes in it because I let it touch something that was wet and it made little holes. But I think it would be fine in this case. I'm going to be able to salvage it, still use it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Remember, I like to mark my hoops with a little red dot at the top so I know that's the top and I don't have to go blind trying to find that little triangle that's up there. So then I just push this in like that. And I tried something new and I don't know if it really makes a difference or not, but I saw somebody, somebody did a video and they always do this, so I thought I'd try it as well to see if it makes a difference. So I have these pins that I use with my long arm machine, so I'm just going to go ahead and do what they suggest. Just take a pin and pin the side right here through, right at that little um, fold like that and one over here like that and then one up at the top and I like to make sure I don't do it right in the middle because I usually pop 
get this stuck if I do it right in the center. So I could do two up here if I wanted to. Just to, like I said, I'm not sure. I think I'll just do the one and then one down here. I don't really know if this is necessary. Have any of you done this before? Do you use pins? A lot of people like to use T-pins from what I hear. Oh, another thing that I really like to use too are these pre-wound bobbins. I never used to use them, but boy, oh boy, this saves so much time. Look how many bobbins come in this box. Pretty cool, right? And I just put a fresh bobbin in, so I'm ready to roll. So I've got to get my thumb drive out because I did go ahead and put the pattern or the embroidery file on here. I'm going to go ahead and load this. Okay, and I'll pull this towards me some so you can see it more easily. Okay. Hopefully it's clear for you. And I'll put this up a little bit like that. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, it says, oh, I can't put this in yet because I just turned my machine on. Okay. The first thing you have to do when you turn your machine on is just hit this little button right there. And it says the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. So I'll say, okay, this is going to move. Can't have your hoop in yet. And now I can put in my hoop. Okay. After I have my hoop in, I'll simply take that thumb drive that I have and place it in here. Okay. And it says right now that it's, well, not yet. When I hit this button right here, it's going to retrieve the patterns that are on there. Sometimes that takes a minute depending on how many patterns you have. Then you simply hit this button right here until you find your pattern that you're going to stitch. And I'm going to do the O. There, that's probably the O. Let's see. Yep, that's the one we need. Perfect. Okay, as you'll notice right here, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to stitch an outline showing me where to place my batting in my front fabric. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll put down my presser foot and hit go. Okay, and then according to the booklet here, the next thing you do is you'll place your batting and your front fabric over that. So my batting and my front fabric, which is the plain white, on top. Now, I do want to make sure that my batting doesn't have any little pieces of thread because those might show through depending on how light my fabric is and my fabric is white so if I accidentally had a black thread on here I'd be in a heap of trouble so that looks perfect so I'm gonna bring up my presser foot right now and I can trim off this little jump stitch there okay now I'm gonna take this batting so that it covers all of my stitching lines so I'm going to make sure that it goes all the way to the tip and from side to side and covers the top perfectly. Okay. But not only that, I'm also going to take my piece of white and bring that up as well. And I got to make sure I'm doing the right side of the white. Let's see. There's that or that. Okay. So I'll put that right over top like that. Perfect. Okay, now it says you can tape it into place if you want to. And, you know, you can if you want to. You could use a piece of scotch tape like this. Uh, you don't need to use any special embroidery tape. Just to temporarily kind of hold it down into place where you need it to be. And if you want to, you could put a piece down here. Oopsie. Okay. And that kind of holds it like that. All right, so now we're on step number two, and I'm going to do it in my red thread because I want to be able to see it really easily, my placement stitches. 
they say to do these placement stitches in, let's see what the wording is, they say, in a neutral color, but I found if I do it in a very bright color, it works out a lot better because I can see where to place my little applique pieces easier. The first one that I did, I did not do that, and I had a horrible time trying to see where to place it. By the way, notice this big tub. I put all my embroidery strips and scraps in here. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to be able to find a something to do with these eventually. But I just uh, like saving them because I can tell how many years I've been embroidering by how much thread I have. <laughs> okay, while that finishes stitching, if we look at the next thing it says it's going to do, it's going to do the diamond stitching. Let me show you. This, the diamond stitching on here. which I think is super cute, and I really like it done in the red as well. I tried it in the gold on this one, and I don't really like it in the gold as much as I like it in the red. So. Okay, my much larger embroidery machine that I have cuts these jump stitches. This machine doesn't, but it's no big deal. Just come in here and cut these little jump stitches so they don't get in the way. And you can actually take that up. Cut off this. Put it in my little tub. Cut this off put it in my little tub. Okay, the next thing it's going to do, like I said, this is stitch number three. It's going to do the quilting. So I'm going to leave it go with red. I'll let you see the beginning of it, and then I'll meet you back here. The first time I did it, I got really upset because this part of the diamond was kind of crooked. But that's the way it's supposed to be because that's where the little eyelets go. Same thing on that side. You see how it's kind of rounded? And I thought, oh my gosh, something's wrong with this file. Okay, that part is finished stitching, so I'm going to raise my presser foot up and get this out of my hoop a little bit so I can show you what to do next. Now, hopefully you can see the letter, the O, right here. And remember, we cut that out perfectly right here. And I can see really well where this belongs. Now, say I press it down there, and it's going to stick to the fabric somewhat. However, if I don't like it exactly where I put it, I can bring it off and stick it on again. It's not permanent until I press it. And even then, I found that I can still mess with it and get something uh, to work or to move a little bit. So I'm going to take my handy little iron and I'll just take a piece of fabric or cloth. Remember I did this the other day, this little towel that I made. You can't see. Let's see. Okay. So here's where I am. This little towel that I made. And then I'm going to put this down on here. And I'm just going to barely touch my little iron to this just to hold it in place. But I'm making sure that I'm covering all of those stitching placement lines. Okay. And so now I don't need to worry at all about this shifting because look, it's on there well when I put it back in my machine. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm ready to go with the next, next stitching. So I'll just put down my presser foot and hit go. So what that's doing is stitching around the O. It's a play, it's a tack down stitch to tack it into place. Tacking both the center and the outer edge. And again, since this machine doesn't um, cut the jump stitches. If I'd like, I can come in here, take this out of the hoop, and cut these stitches. So looking on the back to see if there's anything that might get caught up as well. Put those in my little jug. Okay. And I'm looking for, there we go, there's a little jump stitch right here. I'm going to cut that off. Okay, looks perfect. So I'll go ahead and place this back in. Okay. And put down my presser foot and hit the next one. And this is going to put the zigzag around the edges. And then after that, if you look here, it's going to come back and do the satin stitches. So I'll meet you back here when that yeah, part's I've done. Changed my thread color because I'm on step number seven now, which has to do with the leaves. So I'm going to remove this from my hoop or from my machine. And I'm going to put the leaves right on here. Remember, we cut them prior to doing this with our with my portrait machine. So this is perfect. I can just line this up perfectly and I so like that I did the original color with the red so I can easily see how to line this up and whether I have it placed on there properly or not. And that looks super duper like that. So again, I can get my iron, my little mini iron, and just iron this into place a little bit like that so it won't move. and start stitching this on. Now I do want to show you something. On this one right here, I had done it where I put the big piece of fabric on here, did the embroidery, and then came around with my scissors and cut off the edges. And while it worked out pretty well, I can see some places where some fabric is peeking out. Same thing with this J. You might not be able to see it very well, but if you were in my chair, you could. Whereas on this piece, nothing is peeking out because I cut it perfectly. So let's go on. Put this back in the machine. But really, you don't have to have a cutting machine to do this, but it's very nice. Okay, so we're ready for stitch number seven. Step number seven, I'll put down my foot and hit go. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to do the placement stitch or the tack down stitch. It's going to tack that thing right down. Then the next thing it will do is it'll do the zigzag stitch. And then after that, it will do the satin stitch. So in between those, it may stop and have me go again, hit the button to start it again. For step number nine, in addition to doing the satin stitch around the edges of the leaves, it's also doing some veins in the center of the leaf, which make it really look three-dimensional. Okay, it's time to do the berries now, and I can give you a little tip. If you're using a patterned uh, fabric here for the leaves, it's kind of hard to see exactly where to put your fabric if you've cut it with your cutting machine. So what I recommend you do is you do step number 10 twice. One 
in your red would go around and show you exactly where to place your berries and then the next one would show you or would be the tack down. However, since I'm using a plain solid color, I can see that little line where my berries go. If I couldn't see that, I could stitch number 10 once to make me a placement line. The second time would be my tack down line. But let's see, let me get my berries and see how they're going to go on here. I'm just figuring out, making sure it's going to fit there perfectly. And then again, I can get my little iron and just gently iron this onto here so it doesn't move while it's being stitched. We're nearing the finish line. So I'll put down this again, my presser foot and start stitching and it's going to stitch the tack down then a zigzag and then a satin and it jumps my hoop a little bit like that which scares me every time but hasn't messed up yet okay now it's going to do the zigzag Okay, it's finished stitching the berries and they look absolutely perfect. Let's see if I can bring you over here so you can see them. Can you see how perfectly they're stitched? Everything is perfectly aligned. It just looks fabulous. And now to add my backing fabric. Okay, what I'm going to do is this. Well, first, I'm going to go ahead and trim off these jump stitches. Okay, so my backing fabric, I turn my hoop totally over like this, and I can trim up some of these pieces now before I finish because I like it to be neat, even though it's going to be on the inside. Any of these long strands. Okay, like that. So my backing fabric, as you'll recall, was my Santa Claus fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this in. And I'm going to make sure that it covers this stitch line. Right? And just one. Okay. And let's see, is it covering everywhere? Yep, that looks perfect, perfect, and perfect. And, of course, if I wanted to, I could tape this down, as I had shown you before. And, actually, I might be more apt to tape it now than I would have been before because, um, and you can use this kind of stuff, too, this embroidery tape. Okay. I'm going to stitch or tape this down because it's going to be underneath when I put my embroidery hoop back on. And I do want to make sure that it doesn't move. Okay, with my backing fabric in place, I'm going to turn this over and put it back in place. Now let's look at this again. What we're going to do is we're going to stitch number 13 and then we're going to move it out and undo some of the eyelets. And I'll show you that in just a minute after this is done stitching. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pause so I can cut off these little tiny strips here so I don't get tangled up. Okay, at this point, I'm supposed to turn this over, but first I think I'll trim off these jump stitches again. And 
and turn this over and I can get jump stitches back here as well. Okay, as you maybe can see, there's these little circles right here. I'm supposed to cut just the backing fabric, just start a cut with my seam ripper, just like that. And what this is to do is to let me get my scissors in there. So I'm not cutting all the way through, and I can tell that because I can feel underneath with my finger that I'm not poking through. I don't feel the metal. Just like that. <clears throat> then I can take a pair of scissors in here and just cut off that backing fabric. These little snips work really well for this. So again, I'm just coming in here and snipping off the backing fabric right inside that little hole place that we made <laughs> okay then the next thing that we're supposed to do is trim away all excess fabric including the batting so I'm going to get rid of these pink pieces <clears throat> and I'm going to start by using my duckbill scissors Here they are trimming away the excess fabric so I love to use these scissors for this because I can get really close Right, so I hold them flat, getting really close without trimming the stitching. The closer you can get, the better your final project is going to look. But again, you don't want to cut the stitches. Looks pretty good, except for down here. Okay, <clears throat> that's pretty good on that side. So now I'm going to turn it over to the front. And this time I'm going to get both of the uh, fabric and the batting. I'm not sure if I like to do them separately. I'm going to try that on the top here. Usually I don't, but I wonder if I could do a better job if I did. So there's that. Now let's get the batting. Okay, <clears throat> looks pretty good. Well, not great though, look. Can you see that batting right there that's poking up? That will not be good. So I need to try to get rid of that. To me, this is the hardest and really important part <laughs> of doing this. Just trying to get really close. I guess you just have to be patient and keep working at it. Because that's going to peek out on my final project if I can't get rid of it. So now I'll put this in for the next step. By the way, I'm, while I'm stitching this next step, I did want to tell you that I've been looking on Marketplace. And if you don't have an embroidery machine, I've been seeing some really good deals. <clears throat> Let me start this. And I'll just show you one I was looking at. So that's going to start there. And then... Let's see. I'm going to have you come up here and look at this. So this one right here, if you'll notice, <coughs> excuse me, where did it go? It was in Atlanta. I don't know if you're anywhere near Atlanta, but where is that one? But the thing is, if they're 500 and something, be sure to look and see what kind of extras you get with it. Like, I wouldn't recommend getting this one. <coughs> For your first one because this is just a four by four hoop and right away you'll be wishing you could do some five by seven projects but where is that one in atlanta i wanted to show you like i'm not affiliated with any of these obviously there's one for 350. here it is atlanta Okay, it says it's $500, but I wanted you to make sure that you look at these kind of things. If you hit these arrows, you're going to get all of this embroidery thread, which is a nice deal. You're also going to get 
well, this looks like a mess right here, but the thing that I'm noticing right here is this extra big hoop that you get. This is a fun hoop to use because you can do things larger than five by seven with that hoop. So anyway, that's just, I wanted to let you know that, you know, look at the extras. What else do you get with it? Okay, down here, this is finished stitching. Okay, and now we're gonna trim the excess um, fabric away from the front of the little eyelets they call them. Remember we did it on the back and now we're going to trim it on the front. Because after that's all done it's going to do the final satin stitches that's going to make it look beautiful and we will be totally done. So go to the front now, take your little seam ripper again and just go ahead and use that to, and you can go all the way through this time because you're going to cut the whole hole out. So just go like that. Make sure you don't stab yourself, which I have done. Okay, just so you can go all the way through. Do it on this one also. That's just so you can stick your scissors in and then stick these little snips in and start snipping away. Okay, it's time for the final stitching. Put down my pressing foot, presser foot, and hit go. And this is going to take a few minutes because it's going to go around this edge really nicely. Make the zigzag all around it and also all around these little eyelets. So when that is finished, I'll join you back here. Okay, it says this is finished stitching, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove any final little stitches that I see that I don't want on here. Um, pieces of thread. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here with my scissors and just kind of rough cut around this. Okay, like that. Once I've done that, isn't that beautiful? I love it. Look how pretty that's going to be. Put together with um, some red ribbon. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and cut this um, water-soluble stabilizer off close to the stitching, but obviously, again, not touching the stitching. And then after I'm done with that, I'll get some water. and a Q-tip and remove that extra that's still on there. And then in the meantime, I've also gone ahead and cut out the first of the, the letter Y for joy. So I'm going to start doing the last one in just a moment. But let me get my Q-tip and my water. And I got to be careful not to get this water on anything else because remember I showed you how it messed up my stabilizer that I had. So I'm going to just dip this in the water and it's best if it's warm water. This water is not. But you'll see that just melts that extra stabilizer right away. And again like this. Back out here. So now you get the idea of how this is going to look. It's going to be super cute, just like that. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I've got some new stuff that I'm going to show you how to do on fleece with embroidery. And then I also bought some fabric that I'm going to sublimate on and do some tricks with that. So if you like my videos, like I said, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I go live. Again, thanks for joining me, you guys. Check out my links down below. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.